Part of the fun in video games is that they are larger than life. That's not just the characters and the scenarios though, it's also the weapons. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the 10 most legendary weapons in video games. Starting off at number 10, it's the Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII. When it comes to role-playing games with iconic weapons, you really just can't beat the Buster Sword. This entry is unique because uh, uh, this big chunk of metal isn't even really the main sword from Final Fantasy VII. It's the starter sword. You quickly end up getting weapons with better stats, and it doesn't really take that long to get replaced, but none of those weapons stand out the way the Buster Sword does. I mean, just look at it. It's gigantic. The Final Fantasy wiki describes it as being between 5 and 6 feet long and about a foot wide, which is insane. There's a kind of brutal simplicity to it, with the handguard looking like it was just bolted on or something. And even though the weapon gets outclassed pretty quickly in the original game, it's the weapon most associated with Cloud in other pieces of media. Like, you don't see Cloud show up in Smash Bros with the Mithril Saber, he's got the Buster Sword. And while the weapon always looked cool, it's incredibly impractical. And that really gets shown off in the Final Fantasy VII Remake, where they really put the effort to make this thing look powerful. It's an iconic game and the Buster Sword is the weapon from that game. Like, look at the title screen. The Buster Sword is the first thing you see anytime you turn on the original. They know, they knew this thing was going to be legendary. And number 9 is the Ray Gun from Call of Duty Zombies. If there's a weapon that's incredibly recognizably Call of Duty, it's the wonder weapon that started it all, the Ray Gun. Sure, there are some legendarily broken weapons that pop up in multiplayer from time to time, like the Model 1887 from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, but there's something totally unique about the Ray Gun compared to anything else in that series. This goofy looking thing first started showing up in the game Zombies Mode all the way back in Call of Duty World at War and it's been in most of the games ever since. If there's some kind of zombies mode in the game created by Treyarch, there's a good chance there's some form of the ray gun in that game somewhere. And while it looks dinky, it's pretty powerful, especially if you manage to get the weapon out of the mystery box early in the round. It carries tons of ammo, it's very accurate, and it does splash damage on top of all that, making it the ideal zombie killing weapon for most situations. It's not uncommon for it to get outclassed by other weapons eventually, but the ray gun is consistent useful to have around, and it's one of the best rewards you can get. The thing just keeps popping up too. You can even get it in Cold War, and its basic design is pretty much the same as the old version. But the thing that really makes the weapon legendary is the guitar riff that plays when you get one from the mystery box. And number 8 is the Yaller Horn from Destiny. Destiny has an entire tier of weapons called Legendary, but I doubt many people have heard of all of these things. The Yaller Horn, though, people have heard about. People who don't care about Destiny at all know about the Yaller Horn, even if most can't pronounce it. The name is in reference to the horn Heimdall, the Norse god, blows to signal Ragnarok, which is pretty damn metal. What makes the gun so legendary outside the fact that it looks cool is that it's a special perk, so it makes the gun fire a club of tracking rockets with each shot. Back during the first year of the original Destiny, it was so powerful that getting one was considered a requirement for many players, and it was, for a while, by far the best thing you could do to take down rough enemies like the raid bosses. It's both really powerful and easy to use, which obviously is like the ultimate combo for a great weapon. Add in the fact that it could be difficult for some players to get only added to the mystique of the thing. Bungie knew they had an impressive weapon here because this specific gun was even featured in the live action trailer for the original Destiny. And number 7 is the Blades of Chaos from God of War. For me, the moment it really, really clicked that the Blades of Chaos, Kratos' blade chain things, that he used extensively in the original God of War, were legendary, actually didn't occur until God of War in 2018. If you played this game, you probably know the moment I'm talking about. When Kratos finally retrieves these things from underneath his house, the classic soundtrack of the original game swells, the skies turn red, it's an all-around really cool moment. I didn't expect these things to be in the game at all, and it takes a long, long time before Kratos finally gets them. And the way combat has radically changed for the game, it didn't seem like the Blades of Chaos would work for this new combat system, but wow do they ever. Don't get me wrong, the Blades of Chaos were always great, fun weapons to use. God of War is a hell of a series, and they're iconic from that series. They were unique, and they were visceral in a way that a lot of other action game protagonist weapons really weren't. Most games had your dude using a sword, or the 
their fists or like, you know, a sword. But with God of War, you're whipping around these big knives on chains. Their size and shape makes them look ridiculous, but they just worked. Thing is though, they never really got a big moment until God of War 2018. And that scene, you're like, whoa, this is really like folklore. And number six is the Lancer from Gears of War. There's one thing and only one thing that makes the Lancer legendary, and it's the chainsaw attachment. Its standard function as a machine gun isn't like bad or anything. It's just like most weapons in the Gears of War series. It's satisfying, it's fun to use. But if it didn't have that one defining feature of like a chainsaw bayonet, I don't think we'd be talking about it here. Being able to saw the enemy in half with this thing was just so satisfying to do back in the first Gears of War, and it's still incredibly fun now in Gears 5. Not that much has really changed about it, like the shooting mechanics have been tweaked here and there per game, but the way you rev up the chainsaw to slowly approach your enemy, the way you can instantly kill somebody if you get close enough, it was all there even in the beginning. The sequel added the hilarious and awesome feature of the chainsaw duels into the mix, where if you managed to mash the button more than your enemy, you'd overpower them and chainsaw them. The whole thing's so nasty and over the top in a way only a video game can get away with. This is the weapon that basically defined Gears of War, and while there's technically better weapons you can get in the series, it's hard to beat the satisfaction of going Texas Chainsaw Massacre on your enemies with just the press of the button. And number five is the blue shell from the Mario Kart series, uh, a weapon that strikes fear into anyone who sees it. The blue shell is the great equalizer, the ultimate weapon for balancing the playing field. What it does is very simple, and it does it with brutal efficiency. If you're in first place, it hits you. It's almost impossible to avoid, and getting hit at the wrong time can turn a commanding lead into a crushing defeat. It's a weapon that people either love or hate. If you're losing, it's the best thing in the world, but when you're winning, it's a lame, cheap piece of crap I win button. There are few weapons that have appeared consistently in the same series that have caused so much anger and frustration as this, but Nintendo keeps bringing it back. The funny thing is it's not even actually called the Blue Shell. Apparently, its official name is the Spiny Shell, which I only just found looking up information for this video, but I mean, for real, it's the Blue Shell. That's what everyone calls it, and it's what we're going to call it. It's a total bastard of a weapon that people love to hate, but there's no denying its legendary status. And number four is the supercharged gravity gun and the crowbar from Half-Life 2. This is a game that is old enough to drive at this point, but there's something about the gravity gun that still remains iconic to this day. It's a weapon that many games tried to copy for better or worse, but nothing managed to capture the lightning in the bottle quite like the original. But the thing that really took this weapon over the top was the final section of the game where you sneak into the citadel that spends the entire game looming off in the background. You get caught in a machine that disintegrates all your weapons except the gravity gun, which somehow manages to get supercharged instead. Now, there's nothing holding it back. You can grab whatever and whoever you want and toss combine soldiers around like ragdolls. This thing pretty much makes you unstoppable for the short amount of time you have it. Finally, just getting cut loose with this thing and throw people and heavy objects around without a care is so much fun. And the fact they make you wait till the end before finally giving you that power makes the whole sequence that much more satisfying. Of course, a special shout out goes to the simple crowbar though as well. For a while, this thing was like the symbol of PC first person shooting. And the way Gordon swings this thing at like 100 miles an hour is both ridiculous and completely iconic. And number three is the Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts, the whole series. Probably one of the strangest, but still most iconic weapons on the list. It's a big key that you hold like a sword. I'm not really sure where the blade part of the Keyblade comes in, but it doesn't really matter. It's magic. Why explain it? Used by the protagonist Sora, the weapon's basically the most important thing in the battle between good and evil in the Kingdom Hearts universe. Its main function is to basically seal these things called keyholes that pop up in Disney World Sora visits as a means to keep the darkness from destroying the world. Because it this is Kingdom Hearts we're talking about here. There's a lot of talk about darkness and hearts and heartless, and it's all really confusing if you think about it too hard, but that's kind of the fun of the series. It's nuts, and it knows it's nuts, so at a certain point, you just kind of had to go with it. And the whole deal with the Keyblade is just another one of those things you have to roll with. The designs for this thing are iconic, though. Pretty much the entire story revolves around them, and in practice, it's just a satisfying and fun weapon to use. They're ridiculous if you think about them too hard, but, you know, so is the entire game. And just like the entire game as well, you you gotta admit, pretty cool.
At number 2 is the Super Shotgun from Doom 2, Doom 2016, and Doom Eternal. Doom has its fair share of iconic weapons, and anyone who grew up with the series can probably identify all of them by the sound alone, but more so than even the BFG 9000, the seemingly humble Super Shotgun is one of the most talked about weapons in the first person shooter genre's history even today. Fans of the series swear by it, it's basically the weapon that people use to determine the quality of the game. Is the Super Shotgun good? Then the game is is awesome. If not, no, it sucks. Then it's Doom 3, the black sheep of the whole series. So many shooting game fans base their opinion of a game on the quality of its shotguns, and for many, the super shotgun is the pinnacle. It's the weapon to beat when it comes to shotguns, and for many, it stills yet to be taught. Looking back, the idea of adding only one new gun to Doom 2, and it's just a shotgun that shoots two shells instead of one, probably looked kind of lame to people back in 1994, but the super shotgun ended up being the workhorse of the game's arsenal. And in later games, it was just as good. Doom Eternal went even further and added a hookshot to make it even easier to blast enemies at point-blank range. It's actually the one gun in Doom Eternal without an alternate weapon mod. It's so powerful that any upgrades would probably be OP. There isn't much else to say about this one. It's about as blunt of a gun as it gets. There's a reason they call it Super instead of the Double Barrel or something like that. It's just that it's that good. And finally, we land at number one, I think probably an obvious number one, the Master Sword from the Legend of Zelda series. Yes, it is an obvious choice. We had to go with it because there's just no other weapon out there that is as iconic to video games as the humble Master Sword. This series has been going for over three decades now, and it doesn't look like it's slowing down anytime soon. And even though many of the games take place in time periods that are far removed from one another, one of the biggest constants in this series is the importance of this sword. The Master Sword isn't in every game, but when it does show up, it's always a big deal. This weapon didn't actually get a name until A Link to the Past, where you start out with the humble fighter sword before discovering the much more powerful Master Sword hidden away in the Lost Woods. They really built this thing up when you first get it. It's twice as powerful, shoots a sword beam when you're on full health, and it's fantastic. It's actually the same effect your sword had in the original NES Legend of Zelda, which implies that the sword Link has in that game is the Master Sword rather than just just any old regular sword, but they never straight up call it the Master Sword in that game. Most of the games uh, beyond Link to the Past have used a similar formula, where you start out with a weaker weapon before finally getting the Master Sword, and they always made a big deal about it. The Master Sword is even great in Breath of the Wild, a game that breaks with series conventions in a lot of ways, but one thing it keeps is the Master Sword is still really good. It's the only weapon in the whole game that can't break. Instead of just shattering when its meter runs out like everything else in the game, it just loses power and you have to wait for it to recharge. Plus, you can actually use it for a while, whereas most weapons, a fight with a real enemy is more than enough to end it. Those are just two examples, though, where this weapon shows up. I mean, it's in a ton of Legend of Zelda games, as well as spin-offs, references, and even parodies. It's probably the most distinctly video game weapon of all time, perhaps the most legendary weapon in the entire medium. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.